So I found this speaker and I want to make this inside blender and we are going to animate it and then at the end of the video I am going to give you some tips regarding some a good environment tip I mean how you can put this device inside a very simple environment you can make that environment in 5 minutes just stick till the end and I will show you it's a quick and easy way you can make this happen so let's let's go inside our desktop and we'll work inside blender so first we are going to start blender obviously i'm using blender 4.1 and we are going to delete this camera and this light and then we what we are going to do is go into the edit mode and then scale it down on the z axis no z axis not z axis x axis and then add a loop cut in the middle and right click just a loop cut simple loop cut you can find it from here i guess yeah control r is the shortcut for that and what we are going to do is select the faces from here and control x just just press x and delete the vertices okay then go to modifier section add a mirror modifier okay and then in y direction obviously we need half so we are going to work on the half part of it and the other half will be symmetrically same so in this modeling stage what we are going to do is we are going to basically make model our whole speaker and if you want to hear me out then you can hear me out but uh, i'm basically using all the tools i have right here you can use i'm using loop tools um subdivision surface uh, bevel tools everything that that I can use basically. I'm using mostly using insert and X2 functions in this in this case for modeling the speaker. Uh, you, you you can have the main shape, the overall main basic shape with using X2 tools and stuff like that. And while deleting the middle faces that that are going to that are going to pop up and we are going to extrude every time. Now what we are going to do is I added first a bevel modifier. Then I added, I mean the first was the mirror modifier, second was the um, bevel modifier and last was our subdivision surface. And then what I did was duplicated uh, the same or uh, the outside uh, part of the speaker and then added a solidify modifier and then added a subdivision surface on top of that. So we can have a smooth uh, rubber like, a, uh, not rubber like, it's more like a texture, uh, a woven texture like this. Uh, structure and what I did was I was trying to make the part that is that has that snap tool, snap snap fit tool, uh, and the snap fit system. So what I did was I just extruded everything and then scale it down, extruded and again repeated all everything similarly. And then what I did was all that part that have the endgons, I removed all those so I can have some polygons instead of endgons. And I I just basically inserted and repeated all the things that I am talking about all this time. So use used a K tool for the uh, triangle shape extrude and just just use the simple simplest extrude and knife tools or all you can do. Now just if you want you can just go through it. I just use the same same, same tools like loop tools and all the modifiers so enjoy the modeling stage i will be meeting you in the uh, material section assigning material section
So in this stage, we are going to add a material into our product. Um, for to add a material into our product, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to add the material in our main base mesh, and the main main base mesh is the speaker main design, the shape of the speaker. And what I'm going to do is just add a simple noise texture. First, I'm uh, I was thinking about using the another texture, but I'm going to use a noise texture, simple noise texture, and then you're going to use a color ramp. And then what I'm going to do is uh, connect the noise texture into the color ramp, and we are going to use it for the factor in the mixed color. So we are going to connect the color ramp into the factor of the mixed color node, and we are going to set the, the mixed color node's color as our product color. And what are our product color? It's almost like a gray, grayish color. So I'm going to set it to gray color. And for for reference, I'm going to make it uh, one is fully gray and one is a uh, light gray. But we are going to make it more or less similar kind of uh, color. So we can have a little bit variation and we're going to increase the scale a lot. So we can have a, this is just like a minor detail that I saw in uh, that exists on our product. And now what I'm going to do is add another texture and we are going to add a image texture and what I'm going to do for that is going to add an image texture and I downloaded it from I think uh, texture.com or something. If you want I can I can I can have a link in the description so you can download this texture and what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the texture and what I'm when I import it it's set to UV and for to make it perfect we have to uh, basically unwrap our UV and what I'm going to do is unwrap our UV, scale it up and I'm going to rotate it into 45 degrees or something so that our texture should have a, a rotation rotation effect because our product also has that kind of a rotational effect on the on the texture and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just the color, color ramp and we are going to do the same thing we are going to add a uh, mix color ramp and uh, use the color ramp to give give it a the definition. I mean the main basically the factor. What I'm going to do is add the mix node here, the color mix color node and the mix color node, and then going to add the mix color node and going to uh, set our texture into the factor. And what I'm going to do is change our colors for it. And as you can see, it's it's more or less looks good. Now what I'm going to do is now we are going to fix it by using the first. I'm thinking about using the main textures, the color, color ramps data for black and white. But to basically control it, I was I was thinking about using a invert mode. So I just added an invert mode between the PSDF principal PSDF roughness and our color ramp and now as you can set how much how much color difference i mean how much reference you want in which section which part uh, if you want it in on the woven texture or another section now what i did was i just added a displacement texture and that that was easy just add the displaced text displacement texture and add and connect the color ramp into the height map and what i'm going to do is First, we are going to go into as I am inside. So as I am inside uh, EV right now, so I have to go inside cycle so we can have a better look. So what I did cycles and GPU and as you can see, it looks good. And I just assigned all the textures to every other parts, every other part of the material. And with that, every texturing of the material was done. And if you want, you can have the experimental and add an adaptive subdivision if your PC can handle that. But I am not preferring to do that. I am going to now. What I'm going to do is what I did was just animated our our whole product and I just parented our whole product design to an empty box and I just animated our camera, camera lens, and our product just move here and then what i did was just tweak tweak the settings a lot uh, here and there so we can have a better animation as you can see and i was working on animation for it, it took a lot of time 
to animate the thing as i was thinking about showing the part that have the uh, usb and the aux and cables and things so what i do so what i was thinking that i'm going to uh, add the uh, opening uh, the closing and opening effect of the uh, lid that was um, in the down part of the product and to do that first i added our whole animation and it took a lot of time as you can see i uh, have tweaking around and uh, animating everything uh, for a for a quick tip you can do is when for the starting of the animation i always do is i i i use the focal length of it a very small focal length and then increase the focal length to a bit higher so much higher actually so it works a lot better and then i go i i then then fixed everything inside the graph editor because everything was sloppy the animation was very sloppy so i took it upon myself and fixed everything inside the graph editor and I actually i did, did this in in the last part of the video but i edited it and uh, yeah just put this section here so that you can understand the animation process so basically i what i, I am doing here is fixing our uh, fixing our animation in the graph editor and it took me some time to fix everything in the animation because so there was a lot of things that that can be fixed in the animation because so there was where it, it was very sloppy so i would recommend you use the graph editor for editing the things and then what i did was i added a very awesome thing and that is called a dome and you can check out this channel i i actually found this guy he did he did he do, does a lot of good good animation i mean he actually uses a good effects and use that inside a blender and this guy's name is tommy with the with adin and this guy i you should check this his channel out now, I, I used the dome texture that he was talking about. So what I did was simply uh, followed through his tutorial. And as he was saying, I added a UV sphere and then then uh, or removed half of it and then just inserted, extruded and made this this texture inside our blender. And what I did was. I was just scaling it down and fixing the scale because it looks it, it doesn't look that much it looks very small so i increased the scale so it looks good and then what i did was i just uh, removed the principal vsdf and added the emission shader and what i did then for this is i was thinking about adding a texture the, the e, uh, exr texture and the hdri and i added a a cave texture that I already have. I downloaded it from Polyhaven. And then what I did was, uh, and a quick tip for to use this is to use back facing. And to back facing using back facing, I use it transparent. And in the mix shader, I use back facing. I use simply back facing using. I'm using back facing. And to enable it, you go inside EV. And in the settings section, material settings section, you should uh, use the alpha over anything. And alpha alpha blend alpha clip alpha haze and everything would work now what i did was last at the end of the time was at, at the end of this thing that i actually changed the linear and the sphere settings that that it have the other uh, image texture setting and changed our object coordinate i mean the texture data to object data instead of uv data and it ended up working out as you can see and we have a very awesome texture and i mean uh, base but now the issue we have is that everything is emitting light and we don't want that because if everything will emit light nothing will react to each other and the environment won't will not react to the product and that's an issue so, so to, to fix that we are going to actually duplicate our whole uh material and then what, you, what i'm going to do is uh, select the bottom half part of the at the bottom part and then assign a new texture a ground texture into that and in that ground texture i'm gonna set just a principal vst to the texture and that will make it happen and then i'm going what i did was basically just follow through and 
and now we are going to we have to fix something that is very necessary that we have to delete all the things that we already have that the, like the back facing and everything and now it will react to the thing but in a view world you are not able to see the see anything react to anything because ev is ev ev does not show you any any realistic representation of your world so what i did was i actually uh, added i duplicated the whole vector vector data and then added a separate xyz as the as the komi guys saying a go komi guys was saying in the his tutorial i just followed through and added a color ramp and uh, just added that color ramp inside our sky texture and added because uh, there was a separation between both the texture and that looks that does that was not look, looking very good and so fix to fix that what i did was simply just uh, making a gradient shader that can have a uh, i mean in the sky the upper part of the sky would be emitting light and the the below and down part won't be emitting light it will be a uh, using the principal bhdm data and to you to make that happen what i did was just copied and pasted everything uh, the copied and pasted the xyz and all the data and emission and mix a uh, mix shader and uh, connected the z direction z directional data into the em emission and factor uh, mix shader node yeah I, i know it's getting pretty complicated i think you can see what i'm still talking about here uh, as i'm doing things so you can follow through as i'm doing things so uh, I, and the last thing that i did was i go i did added I mean, I added few things at the end of the video, and that was added some roughness. And to add the roughness, that was easy. Just add a color ramp, and and just that's it. Color ramp is ramp does all the work for you. And as you can see, it's shiny now. It's it's working perfectly. And then what I did was, uh, then what I did was I wanted bump, so the texture would look. much better and i added a displacement map and then go to cycle add displacement to the texture and then change make sure to change the material setting to not only only bump to displacement and bump that it will to do work and then what what i did was simply go to texture mode i mean the rendering mode and as you can see it's working it's perfectly working it looks good and at the end of the video please save everything cause uh, as i was doing my file did not crash but it is possible that yours would crash so at the end of the day now you can see the final result and i hope you enjoy this scene.